dozens of Dr. Brzezinski's patients who had traveled to Washington, D.C. from all corners of the United States stood up and expressed their outrage with the FDA and Commissioner David Kessler. The FDA has made a list and decided who can live and who will die. I guess I didn't make that list. I have had no chemotherapy. I have had no radiation. I chose Dr. Brzezinski instead after a lot of research and a lot of searching. I've been in remission since 1989. Dr. Kessler, I'm not a statistic. We're frustrated that our rights, constitutional rights, have been violated. This has got to end. My children are asking me, Daddy, what does the future hold? My one daughter wrote a letter to the president of this country and said, please don't pull the plug on my daddy. And that just broke my heart and, and broke my wife's heart. My husband is a walking miracle. 16 months ago, the doctors told us there's nothing else they can do. And they told us to enjoy what little life he has left. Look at him, he biked 32 miles after being on Dr. Brzezinski's treatment for two months. And they're saying we can't have it? I have a report from my family physician which tells how well I am doing. My tumors are leaving my body and my, my condition is per improving every day. Now the FDA is saying to me, no, your doctor is a criminal. He should be put in jail and he needs to be shut down. This is criminal. I want the FDA to get out of our lives and stay out of her doctor-patient relationship. What the classical conventional medicine had to do for me was there, nothing. For me, the next thing was the minister. I did not want to undergo chemotherapy, which uh, I had a new name for, Killam therapy, uh, or any type of radiation. I was extremely lucky I found Dr. Borzinski. And uh, I don't want the FDA to take this right from me. I came 18 years ago from communist Romania and the tyrannous dictator Ceausescu never stopped a doctor from treating anybody. How can we have something like this in the United States? Barely a week after these hearings, on November 20th, 1995, Dr. Stanislaw Brzezinski was indicted. Brzezinski was charged with 75 counts of violating federal law and fraud. If convicted, Brzezinski would face a maximum of 290 years in a federal prison and $18.5 million in fines. Not to mention what would happen to his patients. He is their last chance for life. But now the federal government is issuing a death sentence for the patients of this cancer doctor. On February 9th, Houston federal court judge Sim Lake ruled Dr. Brzezinski's treatments have been, quote, illegal under Texas and federal law since 1984, and he ordered them stopped on all but a handful of patients. Then he put a stay on his own order, a stay of execution. I believe that most of these 100, 300 people will die within a short period of time if the treatment is stopped. In 1996, not only did scores of Dr. Brzezinski's patients return to Washington, D.C. to protest his indictment, but many of them testified again before another congressional hearing headed by Congressman Joe Barton. Our first uh, witness is Marianne Canary, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Uh, from uh, Aurora, Minnesota. So. This is Dustin Canary, and he is on Dr. Brzezinski's antineoplastin treatment. This is my husband, Jack Canary. Now, in February of 1994, our lives were drastically changed. My son, Dustin, was only two and a half years old at the time. He was diagnosed with a brain tumor the size of a golf ball. The surgeon removed 75% of his tumor, and the remaining 25% was diagnosed from a biopsy as a malignant, very aggressive medullar blastoma brain tumor, one of the most deadly forms of brain cancer. The doctors told us Dustin had only a few months to live. 
The first treatment offered us was radiation. But the radiation doctor told us that at his young age, Dustin would become a vegetable and it would only extend his life for maybe a few months. The next doctor wanted us to enroll Dustin in a experimental chemotherapy, which was highly toxic. The side effects would include hearing loss, um, kidney and liver damage, bladder, stunted growth, and a possible leukemia. I, I, one question I would like to ask is, would you do that to your child? We weighed the harm these experimental drugs would cause against the fact that they would not cure Dustin and decided not to subject him to these drastic measures. But our oncologists told us that their opinion took precedence over us as parents. This put added stress to the already stressful situation we were in. In April of 1994, we visited Dr. Stanislaw Brzezinski in Houston. Dr. Brzezinski made us no promises, but said that he often had very good results with brain tumors. At worst, it would not hurt Dustin, and it offered the best hope and a longer quality of life. An MRI six weeks after we started Dr. Brzezinski's treatment revealed no tumor. We were very overjoyed. Dustin continued antineoplastin therapy, and one year later, a tumor one inch by one inch in size was found on the MRI. In, that would be April of 1995. Dr. Brzezinski immediately raised Dustin's dose of antineoplastins. There were still no harsh side effects at all. The next MRI in September of 1995 revealed that the tumor had almost disappeared again. To this day, it has not reappeared. If you look at Dustin right now, he is a happy, healthy, four-year-old who has outlived his prognosis. There is no traditional treatment that would have kept him alive with such good quality of life. FDA Commissioner David Kessler loves to grab headlines as a man who loves children so much he wants to protect them from the ravages of smoking. If Dr. Kessler loves children so much, why have he and his agencies been trying so hard to cut off my son's last hope for life without this treatment? My son will die. This is a photo of Dustin Canari at four years old in 1996. This is a photo of Dustin Canari at 22 years old in 2013, happily married. And this is a photo of Dustin Canari today, paying it forward by helping to save the lives of others as a firefighter and paramedic.